cantankerous antiphon. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God. Good morning. Good morning. The Mass this morning is today for the Christmas of St. Francis Xavier. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning. Today we celebrate one of the uh, really titanic women saints of our church, St. Teresa of Jesus, who was a virgin, a religious, and is a doctor of the church. So let us come before the Lord now to confess our sins and so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your Spirit raised up St. Teresa of Jesus to show the Church the way to seek perfection, grant that we may always be nourished by the food of her heavenly teaching and fired with longing for true holiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that sees for itself is not hope. For who hopes for what, people, for what one sees? For if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. In the same way, the Spirit too comes to aid, to the aid of our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them just. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them just. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. says the Lord, 
Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes so that it will bear more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Teresa of Jesus, and that's why we have the special readings today. She was a, a very important figure uh, in the 1500s in Spain in the uh, Catholic Counter-Reformation uh, after Martin Luther broke away from the uh, Catholic Church in 1517 and other uh, groups and countries began to break away from the Catholic Church. Uh, St. Teresa of Jesus and others helped the uh, Church to gain, regain momentum and footing through what we call the Counter-Reformation. So she's an important figure in that. But she had to go through a conversion experience in her own life. Uh, she was born in 1515 in Avila, uh, Spain. If you ever have the opportunity to go to Spain on a pilgrimage, don't miss Avila. It is the most picture-perfect town with still having the ancient wall that surrounded the city and protected it from invading armies. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful city. Uh, and as a, as a child of only seven years, about seven years of age, seven or eight, uh, being in a devout Catholic family, she got the idea along with her five-year-old brother Rodrigo that they wanted to be saints. And they figured the fastest way to become a saint and the surest way to become a saint was to be a martyr. And she knew that the, uh, the, the Muslims were killing Christians in North Africa. She didn't know where that was, but she just knew it was south of Spain. So she and her brother picked up a few belongings and they started marching south from Avila. She only got a, a few hours away and her uncle, who was coming back from a hunting uh, expedition, saw them and found out what they were doing and he said, oh, I'll take you to a place where I'm sure you could get a martyrdom. And he put them on the horse and took them back home to her mother. So that was the real martyrdom that they went through. And she came to understand that there was this big sea called the Mediterranean Sea in between Spain and Africa, and she wouldn't be able to go there. So she decided to devote herself to her, to her faith um, in a different way. Her mom tragically died when she was 14, and that sent her into a tailspin. And uh, in her sort of being a lost child, time, she decided to start reading fiction books of the day, which were all about chivalry and about knights doing great feats and battling dragons and defeating armies to win uh, damsels in distress. And she got caught up into all of that and kind of lost her religiosity and became very worldly for a period of time and got into fashion and cosmetics and so forth. Her family was rather well off. So her father felt she wasn't on a good path. So he decided to put her into a convent because that's what you did with young girls who were uh, kind of losing their way in those days. So he put her into a convent 
And the convent that he put her into was very, very worldly, not very religious at all. So it didn't really help her grow in her faith at all. Uh, eventually, she had uh, a serious illness and went into a coma for a number of weeks. Uh, and when she came out of the coma, she decided that she had to get into a different convent, one that was a little bit more faith-seeking. So she left the one she was in. She went to the Carmelites. But unfortunately, they had lost their fervor for the faith as well. And so uh, she was in the convent from about the age 20 to the age 40, uh, a convent that was had lots of servants for all the sisters, and they could have pets, and they could have gentlemen callers visiting them all the time, and they could wear makeup, and they could dress in you know very fashionable clothes. It was it was more like a sorority house really than a convent. And it wasn't until the age of 40, uh, while she was just being a very tepid, lukewarm uh, woman of faith at all, that she had a spiritual awakening. Uh, through no nothing she did on her own, God just broke into her life and said, Teresa, what are you doing? You're wasting your life. And I want you to do something great for me. And he called her to begin reforming the Carmelite community and uh, changing it from this place of ease and comfort into something much more like the original uh, women who followed Christ. And so she began to advocate for several hours of prayer a day, and uh, no more gentlemen visitors, and no more uh, creature comforts, and she wanted the sisters to be barefoot. Now, how many think the sisters in the convent were delighted to do this? And raise your hand if you think so. No, they weren't at all. And so they said, you're not gonna do this here. And so she left. And she just left with only two or three sisters. And so they formed their own little community, and they were cloistered, meaning they couldn't have outside contact. And they prayed numerous hours a day, and they went barefoot, and they only ate food that was donated to them. And they devoted themselves completely to prayer. Uh, and over the course of about 25 years, she uh, founded 18 different uh, cloistered communities. She also became a close associate with a John of the Cross, uh, who himself was a Carmelite, who went through a lot of travail with his community, and the two of them together uh, started drawing people back towards Christ, which is really what the church needed at that time. The reason that the Reformation happened is because the church had become so worldly, it needed to be brought back to its center. And so she helped in this, and she wrote prolifically and magnificently on the spiritual life. Uh, probably her most famous writing is called The Interior Castles, in which she talks about the various movements of the, of the heart and the spirit towards God by steps and stages. And probably her most ex famous expression is, God alone suffices. And that's what she came to see at the end of her life. She died at the age of 67, when she was on her way to found another uh, convent, another community. That is when she died. She's had some really uh, remarkable incidents in her life. She's known for many comical things. She was a very earthy person. People could relate to her, and that's why they liked her. That's why they were attracted to her. She wasn't, she never appeared holier than thou, but really uh, a very relatable person. And, uh, but her writings were great, and so in 1970, she was canonized, um, I think in 1622. 40 years after her death. But in 1970, Pope John Paul II declared her a doctor of the church because of the depth of her writings. So uh, someone that was uh, somebody I think that we can relate to with uh, all, all kinds of different movements in her life, um, went through a period of worldliness, and finally a period of great godliness. Uh, and so we look to her and others like her to encourage us in our faith journey when we, uh, when we sort of fog out a little bit on faithfulness to God, uh, St. Teresa gives us encouragement to get back on track. So we ask for her prayers for us, that we may be like the, the branches that remain attached to the vine, that we don't separate ourselves from the vine as she once did, that we try to remain attached to the vine and let the Lord work through us and bear much fruit in us and through us. 
We ask that this might be the gift of God for us in our spiritual journey. We ask the intercession of St. Teresa of Avila that she may pray for us. Amen. Please stand as we bring our prayers and needs to God, our Heavenly Father. For the church, may the spirits of prompt things be her guide in witnessing to the gospel message throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, our prayer. For lawmakers, may God inspire their work in always protecting the weakest and the most vulnerable in our society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who despair, May the lot of the Lord shower them with comfort and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diagonal in our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For protection from storms during this hurricane season and through the intercession of Our Lady of Ram Succor, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, for an end to war, violence, and racism, for a pro-life culture, and for a restoration of godly values in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we also remember our Blessed Mother Mary on Saturday, let us ask for intercession for all of our needs as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. May you, O Lord, hear the prayers we have offered, which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but for your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our offerings, O Lord, be acceptable to your majesty, to whom the devoted service of St. Teresa was pleasing in such great measure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> You are 
indeed, holy Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts we pray, by sending them your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, Saint Teresa of, of Jesus and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Save his command and for by my teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Thank you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. With communion and the time, I will sing forever of your mercy, O Lord. Through all ages, my mouth will proclaim your fidelity. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord our God, that your obedient family, whom you have fed with the bread of heaven, may follow the example of St. Teresa and rejoice to sing of your mercies for all eternity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Uh, this morning we have the Bereavement Celebration of Life in St. Joseph Hall from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tomorrow morning is Grandparents Mass at 10 a.m. with a blessing for grandparents and a reception afterwards in our hall. Uh, we're also inviting people to bring uh, Halloween candy, those the masses this weekend, to be collected and used at our trunk or treat celebration in two weeks. Looking ahead to next week, uh, on Wednesday night, our Pivotal Player Series focuses on St. Catherine of Siena. So we invite you to come to that. If you would like to have the meal that's offered at 6 o'clock, please call the parish office by 4 p.m. on Monday to pre-order the meal. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a great weekend. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.